Can a $170 microscope compete with a $600 microscope? Probably not, but we'll give it a chance. For those of you that watch my channel, you might remember a couple years back, I did a review on a digital style microscope from Banggood. Uh, this model here uh, is the revised, improved version. Uh, this is currently on Amazon. So we are going to try it and use it and we're gonna be repairing a Malibu cluster. Now I did go over Malibu cluster repair before, this is the 2013 model, but I made a revision to how I do that repair. So even if you've seen my old video, this one's gonna be a little different. All right, so let's get started. Let's see what they sent me. So, like I said, this is a uh, ooh, microfiber cloth. This is an updated version by a different company, but I'm not gonna say that came out the same factory. Uh, by Mayusui, great name. Uh, anyways, the old model I did a review on uh, was also a seven inch screen with the same amount of zoom, but it was only a 1024 by 600 screen. This is advertised as a uh, 1920 by 1080. So we should get tighter, cleaner resolution up on the screen. And also this one has HDMI out, the old one did not. So that could be a useful feature if you ever have maybe uh, somebody else in the room with you or a group of people around and you wanna show them something, it would definitely be nice to connect up to a large TV. Um, looks like it's a micro HDMI. Is that micro HDMI or my eyes just that bad? I'll see if that uh, works with a standard cable. Uh, a couple other changes with this model. It has a remote. At first, a remote might seem a little silly, uh, but they actually are useful. My my main um, microscope that I use for making these videos also has a remote. And when you're super zoomed in on something, uh, like if you discur disturb the microscope even a little bit just to push a button, that will sometimes knock it either out of focus or out of view. So actually having a remote is nice to capture an image if you're very tightly zoomed in on something. Uh, we got, what we got here? USB, oops. A little fumbly. USB, no, USB-C. Holy cow, is this USB-C? Yeah, it is USB-C. I did not expect that they actually are somewhat modern uh, this is the extender uh, this microscope gives you a, a higher working distance uh, versus the cheaper models so you know this is another hundred dollars more than some of the really inexpensive ones but uh, you are getting more for your money um, so this will give you uh, more room for your hands and tools and if you're working on maybe a module or something with some thickness to it you can get it under there and still get a decent view of it. Maybe it came with an HDMI. Yeah, it did. HDMI mini. It is a mini. Okay, so here's a, an adapter from mini to standard. Definitely going to need that. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. Well, I was paging through the owner's manual. I noticed something that kind of got my attention. But if we go back to the advertisement, it says... Right here, 1080p Full HD, and here I buy the asterisk, uh, 1080p Full HD video resolution, 1920 by 1080. Okay, sounds good, but when you go to the owner's manual, might be some shenanigans going on, or maybe misprints, or who knows, maybe they've changed the hardware from when it's this is printed to when it's advertised, but here it says screen resolution, 1024 by 600. Uh, it's not 1080. Photo resolution though, so like this, like the sensor uh, can handle it. Cause here the video resolution claims 1920 by 1080, but it's only a 1024 by 600 screen. And down here, the HDMI resolution is 720p 60. So it's almost like the sensor can handle the higher resolution, but for whatever reason, the HDMI port can't and the screen can't. So I guess that would mean Maybe it can just record HD, uh, full HD video to the SD card. Maybe that's all it means. I don't know. I'm going to try to see if I can get some details on that. But I'm going to continue on and uh, try this thing out. Mechanically, the build quality seems good. Lots of aluminum. Feels sturdy. Doesn't feel like cheap plastic that's going to break. I did remove the battery cover. Just take a peek at the battery, and it is a rechargeable 18650.
So here I have it set up using the HDMI out and it does look like it can only handle one screen on at a time. So when I plugged in the HDMI, the small screen automatically turned off. I'm assuming probably because I can't calculate the different uh, resolutions at the same time. But anyways, I got it up on the screen and my TV can confirm, let me push the info button here. Uh, as you can see, it is only 1280 by 720 through the HDMI. So the owner's manual is correct where it says HDMI resolution is 720p. Not necessarily a deal breaker, even though I was expecting 1080p, the video quality does look pretty good for only 720. So I'm not gonna throw it in the garbage quite yet. Um, it still might be usable and serviceable. Next step is to actually Put it to some real world use and that uh, is what i'm going to set up for right now so here we have the 2013 chevy malibu instrument cluster board in my older previous video i cover how to take it apart and more details on the component but for today we're just going to be using this microscope to fix this cluster um so here we go r203 is what we're after uh, this has some, you know, Star Trek slider doohickeys here for adjusting the light. Kind of neat. You just slide your finger across it. Same with up here for the main uh, light shooting down. Uh, so we can zoom. Let's see. I'm going to get closer. I'm going to zoom in and focus. And it is a pretty good image. I'm going to get even closer yet. Okay, so this is maximum zoom with the uh, added extender for the higher working distance. Uh, if I remove this uh, extension, I should be able to zoom in closer, but then the lens gets closer to the work and then you have to worry about bumping into it. So we're gonna work with what we're at right here. So like I said, I revised uh, the way I repair this cluster. Um, I've done quite a few of these now and well, I've never seen the resistor itself fail. It's always the solder joint that fails. Um, but also what I'm seeing is, get my phone to focus. Microscope is focused good, just not the phone. Um, besides failure of the solder joint, I've been seeing failure of the foil. Let me see if I can point here. Um, foil traces are getting stressed and they can rip right at the joints. So I'm gonna come through and not only clean up the chewed up solder joint that's giving this intermittent power, I'm just gonna run a jumper for these two traces just to beef it up. So I'm going to start the recording onto the SD card and it should be recording video now. It did come with an SD card, so that was nice. All right, so it's recording and I'll switch back between uh, top view and actual footage that's being recorded on the SD card. I'll check to see if it's 1080p actually if I remember. Oops, I'm just gonna tin things up a bit. doing a little bit of looking down at my actual work to get like a sense of where I am and then looking up at the screen um, for the close-up view and with these digital microscopes you don't get any depth perception like you do with the real uh, microscope so it just takes a little extra you just gotta slow things down just a little bit you can't quite go full speed Here I'm just using the uh, lamp wire as a jumper.
Well, so it was, looks like a successful repair. And then uh, we can give an example of like a really zoomed in uh, image. So let me go to the microprocessor and let's just say that uh, we had to replace this and rework it. So here I'm, I'm holding the board up so I can get a closer zoom, but, and I'll record this so you can see it. Um, but if I had to check this, these pins for shorts, um, this microscope would work fine for inspection like that. It's really tight. This is on free hand in it, it's kind of shaky. If I set this on something to hold it still, um, that'd make it a little bit easier. But we're not replacing a microprocessor today, just fixing that resistor. Here I'm just looking at the raw file that I just recorded. And it does show it being a 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames, which is what it calls out for on the video resolution. So to summarize this thing, even if the resolution numbers are completely made up, the video quality is still good enough. Um, it's, it's usable. Now we got to keep in mind, just, Pulling back down to earth here. This model is $600 without the camera. And this is under 200. So my biggest gripe is depth perception while working. Cause with this, uh, you're using both of your eyes. You can see depth and distance. Whereas this is work, like working with a flat surface, but you gotta ask yourself, where are you gonna put that price point? So you have to decide, is it worth the extra hundreds of dollars. If you're going to be using a microscope every day, definitely. Uh, if you're just doing one project every once in a while, something like this will get you by without having to spend $600. Sorry guys, there's no giveaway this time. Um, we're waiting for YouTube to uh, solve the problem with the recent scammers lately. It's kind of a widespread problem with uh, People claiming people have won to try to scam out of shipping money. So there will not be a giveaway contest this time. If somebody claims in the comments that you've won, it's all lies. You won nothing. There's no contest this time around, so don't fall for it. But I will have an affiliate link down below if you want to purchase it. And hopefully I was able to uh, get enough information on this thing for you to make a wise choice on if it's for you or not. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.